Welcome to the Freeland Writer's Eye Spotlight Talks for YouTube. Before we begin, I encourage you to use these videos interactively. When you are prompted to observe, pause the video and look carefully. When the educator asks a question, feel free to pause the video again and discuss your observations and ideas, making sure to address what you see that makes you say that. We're excited to share these videos with you and read your Writer's Eye entries. Enjoy! Take a long, close look at this abstract collage from Robert Reed's Tree for Mind series. Let your eyes scan the entire surface of the image. Direct your gaze towards the top of the image and work your way clockwise around the collage. Circle the image a few more times and take note of details both big and small. Now, take a look at the busy middle ground and then at the emptier spaces in the background. Which colors, shapes, or forms strike your senses? What areas in this dynamic work do your eyes gravitate towards? What stands out to you? I notice the artist's use of color. Purple seems to dominate this image. Notice the variations of purple used and where the swatches are placed. The second most used color is pale green, applied to the canvas rapidly, as evidenced by Reed's visible brush stroke. What other colors do you see? What forms do they take on? Where are they in relation to other colors and forms? How are they applied to the canvas? Do the colors look pure, or are they mixed with other colors? The deep red crescent amongst these more subdued colors grabs my attention, along with the splash of yellow to the right of this. What could these colors signify? Take a moment to reflect on Reed's use of color in this work. Along with color, line is another dominant element in this collage. I noticed the whirling black lines overlapping and intersecting with bouts of color. I also noticed these same lines are used to create jagged edges and geometric forms in the corners of the work. What do you notice about the lines? What forms do they create? Notice where line meets color. What tends to happen? These lines, created by charcoal, are layered onto the paper at different moments in the collage process. Try to follow a line and see where your eye leads. Keeping in mind that this is a collage, try to identify where layered elements exist. In what order might the elements have been arranged? I noticed the use of staples and the way in which they're adhered to the paper in singles, doubles, and crossed. What are some other observations you have about these staples and their arrangements? There are several areas with overlapping paper. Can you identify them? What do you think the artist's intention was when creating these layers? Take a few more moments for observation. In his art, Reed wanted to incorporate elements, specifically colors that had, quote, some kind of personal meaning, end quote. One explanation for Reed's use of purple is that he had a special attachment to the color. In an artist talk he held at UVA in 2001, Reed expressed his love for the color saying, it's quote, both elegant and beautiful, end quote. Another explanation for the use of purple, along with the other colors and forms in this work, can be understood through the artist's own visual language, which consists of recurring symbols, shapes, colors, and forms that reference Reed's life experiences and Virginian heritage. This work is specifically developed from Reed's memory of Charlottesville's First Baptist Church. The purple color is a reference to a purple velvet chair Reed sat on during church events. The chair was special to him, and he recounts that sitting in it made him feel, quote, like a king, end quote. As inferred from his other collages in the series, 
the shape of the chair is abstracted. It can be seen protruding from the red mass in the bottom left corner and again projecting upwards from the same structure. With this information in mind, what new ideas do you have about this collage? Take a moment to think. Robert Reed was an abstract expressionist. He attended Yale School of Art and later taught there, becoming the only tenured African-American professor. While in attendance, Reed trained under Bauhaus instructor Joseph Albers. Albers taught him formal tools of abstraction and how to encode meaning using a visual language, a skill Reed employed in nearly all his works. His autobiographical artworks are made up of geometric shapes and recurring personal symbols inspired by his life experiences. Let's return to our observations. Besides Reed's memory of the purple chair, several other features of the church can perhaps be located in this work, such as the stained glass window and the building's green exterior color. Present in other collages in this series, Reed said his use of the green references the actual color of the church's facade. And the church's stained glass windows, which used to mesmerize Reed during sermons, are possibly seen in the bottom left of the work. A charcoal circular shape, patterned with converging lines, resembles the metal frame of the stained glass window. What are other patterns you see in this image? My eye is drawn to the slender black and white pattern triangle. According to Reed, this pattern represents the front steps of his childhood home. The shred of paper, collage to the canvas, represents a place where Reed was able to relax and think freely in the comfort and safety of his home. Even the title of this collage is in reference to Reed's family home. Tree for Mine can be understood as a reference to Reed's address, 349 10 and a half Street, as it sounds similar to the numbers 349. The titles of many of Reed's works are as playful and meaningful as his art. Autobiographical details from the artist's life are hidden in plain sight. If you were to create a work of art, what details would you include from your own experiences? What symbols would you use and why? It's also worth noting that Reed created abstract art as an African-American man during a tumultuous time. He avoided directly portraying political and societal issues during a highly politicized period in the art world. Instead, Reed focused on translating his own personal experiences and memories into an abstract visual language. We'll end our close look at Robert Reed's Tree for Mine with a few questions to resonate with. Does this image remind you of anything you've seen before? How can you translate Reed's art into writing? Can you incorporate metaphors, memories, or wordplay in your writing, just as Reed did in his art? Thank you so much for examining Robert Reed's Tree for Mine with me. I hope this time of observation and reflection sparked your interest and will continue to inform your creativity and thinking. We hope you've enjoyed this Writer's Eye Spotlight Talk. Please reach out to the Education Department with any questions or feedback. Our email is museumoutreach at virginia.edu.